This video was brought to you by Marcus Beal, Elbil Mac, Abadur Planner, Stolenberg, Camp Power, and Beal Componente. Yo, what's up? We are now in the garage, and behind me here you see Volkswagen E-Up. Did you know that E-Up was the first EV to get the CCS plug? Huh? So yeah, we're gonna do a little range slash degradation test. You know, this has supposedly 16 kilowatt hour uh, net capacity initially, but how much does it have now? Well, we'll see. You know, this is like the, the E-Golf's little brother. It came before E-Golf came out. So yeah, just a quick, you know, let me just show you here. You know, the garage is supposed to have two, you can have two cars in the garage. Garage looks big, right? Well, it's just that this car is so small. <laughs> so yeah, uh, the charge port is on the right side, which is the wrong side, should have been left side with the right side. I now put the heat in here. I'm gonna preheat the car with some land power. And man, look at this, look at this. Look at this interior. <laughs> and this is called Highline. Yeah, not, not Highland, Highline trim. It has this Garmin uh, where you can have some battery status. Yeah, actually, this is where I first heard battery status. It was as this, at this uh, uh, event in uh, Germany, uh, Frankfurt, yeah, IAA. <laughs> but okay. So this is it. I'm not gonna tell you. To, I mean, not gonna show you guys too much, but uh, you probably seen it before. So we get over here. Yeah. So we see here, we have the OBD Alex adapter there, and then I have car scanner here, and at least car scanner. Yeah, car scanner reports around 96% state of charge when we have charged 100%. So. Uh, I tried to re-plug in again, it doesn't uh, charge any more than that, but look at that. Look at the voltage, nice high voltage, unlike the E-Golf, which is around 300, 350 volt only. Uh, battery uh, it might not be in the best temperature, but I think that's good enough. And then here we see uh, the volt, uh, voltage on the cells. Uh, yeah, so anyway, uh, let me see. If I fire, oh yeah, okay, so let me show you that. It has a traditional key. Yeah, this is what they used 20 years ago on Volkswagen. We just do this. I haven't figured out how to... Okay, I haven't figured out how to uh, change the language yet. But also, wait, wait, where's the odometer? Ah, okay. I think I need to close the door. And here you see that it's claimed to have 131 kilometers of range. And if you stop the engine, it has 72,000 kilometers on the odometer. And then if you look at um, the documents here, you see that um, it was uh, first registered in 2014. Yeah, so this makes the car 10 years old. Ooh, let's see how many kilowatt hour we have left then. All right, we're on the move. So I have to cruise at 95 kilometers per hour to match 90 GPS speed. So yeah, the display here doesn't show any state of charge uh, percent or whatever. We, we have this analog tank gauge thing. <laughs> I bet uh, Volkswagen, they just took a regular up and then just uh, put whatever electric drivetrain in it and then they call it the E-up. So uh, yeah, at least we can see here some battery status. Uh, yeah, so we have now, uh, well, we're using seven, okay, um, 236 watt hour per kilometer so far. It's uh, hopefully going to stabilize. Yeah, all right. Um, we have remaining range and stuff there. So uh, it's pretty nice we can change the display, but I just keep it like that. And how is the comfort in this uh, Deutsche Electro Auto? Not too bad. You know, this is a 10 euro car, but it's fairly affordable. It's roughly the same price as uh, Soul I wanted to buy. So sounds like also good sound levels. I need to measure all that, do proper tests. But um, yeah, so far so good. I just noticed that, uh, okay, we have done 12 kilometers, 13 kilometers, and we're already down to 80%, <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> okay, yeah, uh, the, the very optimistic range was when HVAC was off. But you see now the car claims 80 more kilometers, let's say 70 more kilometers then, or, uh, okay, at least the consumption has uh, started to stabilize. 194, uh, 193 watt hour per kilometer, wow. And it, it, it is half degree Celsius outside, plus that it is wet outside. So this is considered winter consumption. Yeah, I believe that uh, the E-Up is quite light. Oh yeah, maybe we should check the weight. Yeah, we should. 
I think it's light and quite nimble, but also, uh, yeah, it has tiny trailer wheels. 14, wait, was it 14 or 15 inch wheels? And it should be efficient. And it has good old halogen lights. Look, boom, huh? <laughs> That's actually pretty good, huh? <laughs> Better than any Chinese car nowadays. Oh yeah, this is German quality. Well, let me see, and then low beam. Huh? 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 Think about this, man. This is a poor man's EV. It might not have that good range, but it is good in most other ways, at least. We are down to roughly half tank now, <laughs> or at least 50% yeah, state of charge. And we have done only 38 kilometers. This does not look good. It means that we get less than 80 kilometers of range. When I tested a uh, Soul uh, during winter, it had around 100 kilometers of range. So yeah, the Soul simply has a, a way bigger battery. So that matters. Plus that the Soul actually could almost match this car in uh, consumption. Now we're down to 12 kilometers of range left. Yeah, but that is still 22%. Uh, well, if this state of charge is correct. You see, the battery is heated up slightly to 11 to 13 degrees Celsius. So I'm gonna try now and charge at Ionity. Well, uh, let's hope we can make it there because we have uphill. Yeah. Uh, okay, let's see. Uh, we got the first warning at 30 kilometers uh, left. Uh, and then I think there will be a second warning at 10 kilometers left of range. So, so far you can see the stats there. Uh, 183 watt hour per kilometer. Wow, nice. But we have done only 61 kilometers. Oh, shit. Uh, <laughs> this is way lower than the Seoul. Okay, uh, 10 kilometer range left. Nine, okay. But still no uh, warning or anything. But I feel like uh, the cabin is a bit colder than uh, in the beginning. We set it at 22 degrees. I think ever since uh, we hit 30 kilometers left and it went in some kind of eco mode. It's a similar behavior as golf. But I mean, it's still going. Oh, I can, oh, oh, there, there, there. Okay, okay, warning, warning. Achtung, Achtung. Yeah, okay, now it says the begins uh, limited comfort. Uh, and then you see here that the the kilowatt uh, power limit is dropping now. We have 60 kilowatt. Initially it was 80 kilowatt for the longest time. So now, yeah, it's time to bail out soon. But uh, the question is how deep do I want to go? I have seven kilometers of range left. Uh... All right, we're now at Ayonte. I didn't want to go too deep and risk anything. So yeah, we have six kilometers of range left, but no heater. <laughs> yeah, it's getting cold in the cabin. So here we have the stats, 182 watt hour per kilometer, 66 kilometer. So I'll try to calculate the battery capacity based on this. And we can see, well, I'm not sure if we have 16%. We have to check out uh, what the, the, the Ionti display shows. Oh, we had 10%. <laughs> okay, I think it was good to bail out, but let's check her voltage. Oh, okay, 365. Okay, let's go inside the car and check out. Wow, look at this. Despite only 12, 14 degrees Celsius in the battery, we're receiving maximum speed, 46 kilowatt. <laughs> this battery does not Colgate. Must be plenty of cobalt in here. Wow, <laughs> this is the perfect press car shuttle for me. Yeah, except for the range. Oh shit, yeah, the range, oh man. So we're talking about roughly 70 kilometers of range only. Hmm, well, let's see, okay. Uh, you know, this is interesting. Let me see. Uh, how is this again? If I turn off the car now, okay, and then open. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So the car claims that we will finish charging in 20 minutes. Really? Huh? Uh, okay, we're down to 38 kilowatt now. Uh, but uh, yeah, you know, I want to test the uh, supercharger. Yeah. So um, let's get over to the supercharger V2 and see if it works over there. But uh, well, at least let me get more than 30 kilometers of range so I can get some heat, uh, okay heat in the cabin. <laughs> we are now at Nebenes supercharger. So yeah, before I forget about this, I calculated that we have 13.3 kilowatt hour 
And if it's true that we had 16 kilowatt hour initially, I'm not sure if that is what we can actually achieve or if there is any losses and that we actually get less than 16 kilowatt hour. But it means that we lost only around 2.7 kilowatt hour after 10 years for a small battery like this. That's actually pretty good. But you see, 13.3 kilowatt hour is a lot less than Seoul's uh, battery that can get uh, at least 17, 18 kilowatt hour. I wonder if there's even a 20 kilowatt hour Seoul out there. I'm talking about net, net capacity, by the way. But okay, let's try supercharger then. Okay, let's see. Let's try to do the handshake. Yeah, as, uh, as long as the ignition is off, then I don't see any data here. I have to fire up the car first. Hmm. This takes a uh, suspiciously long time. I think by now it should start charging. Okay, that didn't work. Let's uh, try another stall. Uh, uh, okay, whatever. Uh, let me see. Okay, let's try this. Yeah, seven. Okay, let's try this. It's done. Um, it might not work with V2 superchargers. I don't know, many legacy automakers, they tend to fail at uh, supercharging. So what you have to remember when you stop the car is that you just turn off the ignition, but then if you open the door, it will bug you that the lights are on. There is no auto here, so you have to switch it to off, otherwise you'll be draining the 12 volt battery. Huh, there's a symbol that we are connected, but uh, handshake fail again. So uh, I'm kind of low on juice, so I need to top up. Hopefully it works on chem power. Ah, scheisse, this car has no backup camera. Um, it has backup sensors, at least. Yeah, so that's a small a disadvantage. The Soul has backup camera. So I kind of need to, oh, wait, how, how far are we? Well, I mean, the car is so small, you can just poke over and see how it is. <laughs> Let me see, well, okay, you see, it detects something there. Yeah, this is this is all school stuff, man. Okay, okay, stop, stop, stop. Yeah, it works here at the camp power, fortunately. So you see, uh, it's it starts handshake quite quickly, but then the data here doesn't show anything. So I have to uh, do this and then yeah, <laughs> start the car. And now we see something here. So we should be getting 40 kilowatt again. By the way. The e up has no thermal management, no active cooling, so eventually it will rapid gate. <laughs> uh, wait, huh? Why are we not getting... I think, okay, it ramps up just kind of slow. But let me check something here. It feels... Yeah, we are getting heat. Wait, I'm going to check. This could be leftover heat in the, in the coolant, but uh, we should get heat while we are DC charging. But I noticed that we did not get any heat when we were AC charging. Yeah, you see now. No. Oh man! Oh no! This stupid navigation keeps bugging me about low juice and if I need to navigate to something. No, no, stop bugging me about it. I haven't figured out how to turn off that shit. Uh, this is quite uh, basic stuff, man. Really primitive uh, user interface, and yeah. Uh, okay. Anyway, yeah. You see, forty-three kilowatt. Oh, it jumps a little bit up and down. But we are getting juice now. Yep, I can confirm that uh, uh, while we are DC fast charging, we do get heat in the cabin. And uh, yeah, see, even at 70, well, I'm not sure how many percent uh, this seems to be incorrect, but we're still getting around 40 kilowatt. Let's check outside. Okay. Oh, it started snowing now. Oh, okay. Wow, the, the lights look a bit yellowish. Well, that's the park lights. So we can check here, okay, 76%. Well, okay, uh, well, this is what uh, the charger delivers. That is some nice charging speed. Okay, let's click here, you see? I wonder when it will throttle. Oh, uh, this is interesting, you see here, the consumption is 1.3 kilowatt. Yeah, this is HVAC. And uh, if we look here, oh, shit, this is a bit too bright. It reports 41.8, but then we get... Oh, no, it's not throttling now. Yeah, okay. Um, the chem power is a bit uh, delayed. Yeah, it should update soon. 
but it seems to throttle at roughly 80%. But still, it doesn't just plummet. It can still maintain over 30 kilowatt. Wow, this is some amazing charging speed for a small battery. All right, we're gonna head over to V3, V4 supercharger at Garden One now. And uh, look here, so the battery heated up a little bit during the charging session, but not that much. So it seems like uh, you can achieve maximum charging speed already at around 20, maybe, I don't know, 10, 15, 20 degrees Celsius. It doesn't require it to become very hot for, oh shit, maybe I shouldn't hammer too hard. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it seems like this car uh, can perform really well without having that hot battery which is an advantage for me uh, if I want to use this as a press car shuttle. The only problem is the somewhat short range compared to Seoul. So. But then Seoul is uh, plagued with uh, lots of battery issues, uh, bad battery design, bad chemistry, and yeah, lots and lots of batteries are failing on the Seouls I see for sale. All right, let's check the weight of the car. Front axle. <laughs> 720 kilograms only the whole car 1300 Wait, really huh is this heavier than the next generation with big battery wow okay we're now at garden one supercharger see we have v4 supercharger over there man this shit looks scary um i have a tiny car with tiny wheels <laughs> so is this gonna work uh, I don't think so let's see normally if it works it yeah it, by now if it doesn't work then most likely it doesn't work so yeah it seems like v2 uh, v3 supercharger will not work on the, this tiny e up wow it is wow you see they put the wheels on each corner <laughs> that's probably why it gets some good comfort okay whatever let's just go home i have 40 kilometers of range and that is enough so let's see oh mm, my only concern is all this uh, snow uh, i don't know what you call them snow piles oh i'm gonna go a little bit uh, off-roading here oh man these snow lumps they are so deep yeah, I mean, you have a fat e-tron, you can raise the suspension, no problem. But this little bugger here, oh, kind of struggles a bit. Oh, oh. Okay, okay. Uh, let's get out of here, man. Oh. All right, we're back in the garage. And uh, yeah, I just uh, noticed something. We have 12 volt outlet there. Um, but where's the USB? Uh... That's just a 2.5 millimeter uh, audio jack input. Wait, does this car not have USB ports? What the heck? We have a CD player here. <laughs> okay, so um, apparently this car was built before USB port was uh, invented. Okay, whatever. <laughs> well, all right, so uh, let's get out of here. Um, yeah, so. What do I say about the car? Um, it's small, it's nimble, it's actually comfortable, it charges fast, but um, the main problem here seems to be that it lacks backup camera and the battery is somewhat small. So um, yeah, I still have to test Soul and see how good that one is because these two cars, they actually cost roughly the same. But as I mentioned, Soul might have troublesome battery. Here, I haven't heard of any E-up batteries failing left and right. So yeah, but um, I should test the, the E-up here, this one, th this car, uh, to uh, Yalu and at least do a um, 500 kilometer challenge before I return it. But uh, yeah, this car belongs to Marcus Beal and if you wanna buy it, it is for sale. But maybe you should buy it after I do the test. Anyway, I think that's going to be it for now. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, thank you for watching and talk to you later.